George, we have been examining the implications of the two different paradigms associated with looking at Genesis. From your perspective, what do you see in terms of implications of the, the historical aspect of Genesis versus another paradigm that would, that would move it into some sort of an analogy? One of the things that I think is very evident from the Genesis account is that it was intended to be understood as linear history. In fact, that's one of the things that the Bible introduces to civilizations that you don't see anywhere else. Uh, the Greeks had a cyclical view of history. The Egyptians had a peripatetic view of history. You have uh, the chaos theory of the Babylonians. With the Bible, you, you have this notion that there is providence, a purposeful plan by God himself, that is then worked out across time in a linear, understandable, traceable fashion. Th that's woven all through the book of Genesis. And as you've seen with the toldos, the, the structure of the generations, it is intended to be understood as history. Interestingly, it's always been understood as history. Throughout all of the ages, various theological traditions, East and West, it's always been understood as an historical account where details are actually marking out specific individuals, accomplishing specific goals, doing specific things in a specific location. So it's really not until the 18th and 19th century Enlightenment thinkers start to question the details of the Bible that anyone has ever wondered whether or not the Bible details an historical account. That is when we start to introduce other standards to, to be, in a sense, the guide through which to understand the scriptures rather than the scriptures as the guide to understand all of the details of life and culture. George, when you see what's happening in our culture today, do you then tie it somehow back to our view of, of Genesis and that early historical account? When you stop viewing the Bible as history, when you stop viewing an actual historical Adam and Eve and start to impose new understandings, you're just dragging your worldview onto the the understanding of mankind through the ages. It, it's why moderns can suddenly, out of the blue, come up with new views of sexuality, new views of, of the nature of culture or of government, and impose those as if these are now the discoveries of modern science. They're no such thing. What they are is the imposition of a worldview assumption on an existing order. Do we have evidence in the rest of the scripture that those writers, we believed inspired by God, uh, were looking at Genesis from a historical perspective? Yes, an emphatic yes. All through the Minor Prophets, there are constant references back to the events of Genesis and Exodus treating those events as historical events. You can't read the Psalms without a constant reminder of the history of redemption, which is a series of sequenced providential acts by God amongst his people in space, in time, in history. When we come forward all the way to the New Testament, not only are genealogies essential for our understanding the Gospels, both for Matthew and for Luke, uh, but in the Gospel of John and in the Gospel of Mark, there are constant references back to Old Testament events. Uh, as actual history. The Apostle Paul understood the events of the uh, early chapters of Genesis as formative, not only for our understanding of history, but for relationships between men and women and their children, uh, the character and nature of marriage, uh, rightness and wrongness in moral relations, including sexuality. All of that is assumed from those early chapters of Genesis, oftentimes quoting the passages verbatim. 
Uh, sometimes in the apostolic preaching, they would quote from several different translations, uh, the Hebrew uh, or the Septuagint, which was the Greek translation of the Old Testament, or an Aramaic vernacular translation. And so they're mixing and matching and saying, all of this points to the same reality. This is history. This happened. It's been recorded. And we're to understand where we are and where we go in light of where we've been. And when Jesus was asked the question about marriage, he pointed them back to that historical record, did he not? He did. And he quoted Moses specifically as an historical figure who actually said something that was recorded in the historical account. Mm -hmm. A lot of Christians I know will take the first three chapters of Genesis and create a separate category for them. And then from Genesis chapter four on, they feel like, okay, this now is reliable history. Uh, but if you look at the genre of writing, the character and nature of the vocabulary, the structure of the whole book of Genesis uh, with its uh, regular punctuations of the toll dose, there's literally no linguistic or literary reason to do that. So what's the reason? Well, we've baptized a worldview onto that and, and we accommodate ourselves to it. Well, George, all of this brings us back then to the notion that the history uh, that's recorded in Genesis or any true history at all is critical for us in terms of understanding what's going on around us. Yeah, in, in fact, uh, what I would say is that, that history is what helps shape and direct science itself, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to understand what happened, and then science can help us understand how it happened. Uh, but science doesn't tell us what happened. Uh, what we've got to do is we, we've got to start with this notion that there is truth that has been revealed. It may have lots of mysteries interwoven into it, but science can help us unravel some of those mysteries. So science is on this uh, progressive path of discovery, but what history does is it grounds that progressive path of discovery in a clear line of understandability. That history becomes the anchor then for everything else. And when we unhinge our sense of culture from that anchor, then we're all together adrift. We lose our sense of our identity. We lose a sense of the purpose and the meaning of man, the nature of uh, gender, sex, marriage, all of it. Mm -hmm. And all of that is what God gave to us when he gave us that historical record of what he did in the very beginning. Starting in the garden. Mm -hmm.